I'm learning astrology from last five years. Why do my predictions keep failing? Why did this astrologer's predictions fail? Why did that astrologer's predictions fail? Oh boy, so many failed predictions. Now when I say failed predictions, I do not mean some uh, external world event predictions, you know, like uh, who will win the election or what happens if this person becomes president or prime minister and all this you know uh, when i'm talking of failed predictions i mean uh, predictions for those people who who have approached somebody for a personal consultation and who have verified their birth details with almost 90 99 percent accuracy okay so why do those predictions fail so does it mean that astrology doesn't work or uh, what is it uh, what is the secret or does it mean that the astrologers are not using the signs properly or what is it you know what are some of the technical reasons so nine reasons why an astrologer's predictions fail so here I've included uh, technical and uh, non-technical reasons also because sometimes people just think that okay uh, this astrologer's prediction failed because uh, he or she did not use some technical astrological input um, but that is not the case always as we will see okay. As usual if you're new then please like comment share and subscribe and uh, if you want a personalized consultation from me my website is down in the description section. God is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him for sure even if your predictions are wrong. <laughs> okay so number one reason this is the king of all reasons and this this is this is gold this is the golden reason why this uh, why predictions fail because most of the astrologers unfortunately they completely dismiss the bhava chale chart bhava chale chart is the chart where uh, which shows which uh, in which house a planet is placed in so we know the d1 the lagna chart right but unfortunately the d1 which is known as the lagna chart only shows the zodiac sign where a planet is placed okay so for example if you are a cancer lagna uh, and you have saturn in capricorn for example so now for a cancer ascendant uh, the seventh sign is actually capricorn because if you go seven houses from cancer or seven signs you get capricorn but does it mean that if a cancer ascendant has saturn in capricorn it is in the seventh house although it is in the seventh sign well not necessarily that will only be 100 percent true if the degree of the ascendant is around zero degrees but if your ascendant is more than zero degrees you know, sometimes depending on the calculations of the bhav chart and the bhav madhya and all this you know uh, the planet may be in capricorn like saturn may be in capricorn but not in the seventh house it may be in the sixth house for example okay so therefore uh, the houses are very important because the houses give external events so if a planet is in seven it will give marriage in the bhava chart or if it is in the uh, sixth house it will deny you marriage so many times people i see they they say oh i have jupiter in seven venus in seven so actually they don't have it in seven they have it in the six but because they have it in the seventh sign they think uh, oh this is also in the seventh house they don't know the difference between the lagna chart and the bhava chart so uh, if you have not watched my video on bhava chart then please go and watch okay that will actually help you and if you do not use the bhava chart see uh, sometimes we miss one or two things you know that is okay but if you do not use the bhava chart at all then it's like saying you are not seeing the houses and without seeing the houses how do you predict what events will come so if you miss like uh, two three planets uh, houses you know and if they are in a different house then as they appear in the lagna chart then uh, if imagine these two three planets one of the planets mahadasha is coming you know like saturn mahadasha 19 years 
so then you say uh, suppose saturn is in seventh and then you will say oh yeah you will get married you know at the age of 25 and then for 19 years 35 44 till the age of 44 this person doesn't get married and then this person will be like hey what the hell is this you know why did you uh, say that i'll get married i never got married okay so please use the bhav chart ignoring pancha tattva okay so what is pancha tattva no, it's like the tattva of the rashis and the planets and the yeah and the houses basically right <clears throat> like for example uh, if if you are talking of like uh, the signs the zodiac signs you know like we have fire signs okay so planets placed in fire signs will always give some initiation or some new start to some activity but we don't see that we will just see oh this planet is in this house this will happen but this planet is in this house but what kind of a tattwa is the planet and the house and the zodiac sign if you don't combine all this and you just give a random prediction for example uh, planets in fire signs are known for initiating things so they may have tendency for entrepreneurship for example but then there should be supporting houses also which are connected okay like the first house fifth house ninth house if they are not linked then the person has no inspiration to start anything new even though the person wants to start something new okay so there's a big difference between wanting and actually starting so if you don't and you just predict you know you will do job you will do business you will do this you will do that oh it will end up in a blunder so please use panchatattva of the signs houses and planets that will give you amazing results number three this is again very 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 important this is non-astrological not directly related to technical astrology not giving importance to nimitta omens nimitta omens they are like some good and bad signs that you see before you consult somebody it could be before, it could be during or it could be after but 80% of the times it is it's before or you know just before or a few hours before. Like for example, uh, it is said that if uh, you are about to consult somebody and then you uh, see a crow, a crow is coming uh, and standing in your balcony. Now you may see crows all the time but if generally you don't see crows very rarely you see them i mean you see them but you don't see them in your balcony uh, but one person wants to consult you and he's coming to your house or he's coming online to uh, get a reading from you and then you suddenly out of nowhere uh, you see like a crow which signifies saturn that can show delays so maybe if the person is asking you will i get married you you need to say no no not now there will be delays okay and of course that will be reflected in the chart itself you know it is not that just you see some saturnian elements and there is delay no it's not like that you also should see that so now if you see a crow you should put more importance to saturn you know the, so most likely it will happen the mahadasha antardasha that is running will be either of saturn or aspected by saturn or that planet suppose venus mahadasha is going on that will be either in capricorn or aquarius so then also there could be delays okay so yeah nimittas are like they help you but we don't see because the awareness is not there okay we, we just take life casually oh i've seen this seen that what's the big deal you know it's okay fine this one this should be uh before number one actually this this is like zeroth reason <laughs> this is the ultimate reason because of which predictions fail because we do not comprehensively analyze the whole chart which means we see individual things you know individually sun is here moon is here 10th lord is here 11th lord is here uh, dashamsha navamsha we see all them but we don't we are not able to comprehensively bring out the final outcome if this is something which we which we cannot do then we should practice more like you know one or two years uh, yeah practice on one chart every day you know like the second lord sixth lord tenth lord eleventh lord these four houses what what profession are they indicating you know 
don't just say saturn um, sun is in 10th house you will become a politician or is officer uh, mercury is in the 10th you will become a um, you will become a corporate uh, ceo or somebody like that it doesn't work like that venus in 10th you become uh, a magician or somebody like that <laughs> so so you have to see all the nine planets all 12 houses 12 zodiac signs and then you have to understand what is going on and also check divisional charts dashas and transits okay astrology is very complex ignoring the karakas so for career you just see 10th law 10th house blah 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 you see the shamsha you see everything and then you don't pay importance to these three karakas sun saturn mercury because they are the karakas right so for marriage you see second house seventh house eleventh house everything navamsha everything done but you forget to see venus so it will lead to big big massive blunders because karakas deal with the internal feeling of the heart okay so if venus is badly placed but if the other houses are well placed second seventh eleven then the marriage will be there it will continue but the person will be unhappy okay so therefore please put light on the karakas know how to differentiate between 7th house and venus and by the way i also have a video on it you know 7th house and venus you know good 7th house bad venus and vice versa please check that out and this is classic for youtube astrology you know nobody talks about dashas nobody they are only talking of transits okay why because some of people believe that oh you know dashas are not very important uh, somehow this has primarily come more uh, from the west you know because western astrology they do not have much uh concept of dashas they don't have much knowledge either on dashas because that is more a vedic concept they use transits more and in vedic astrology transits are like gochar okay but predictions are always given on the basis of dashas you can use transits to know where there is some light you know nothing wrong in seeing transits but comprehensive analysis has to be done and then we need to check the dashas only then we should see transit so that is step three okay but we do the other way around we see oh my venus is transiting seventh house why am i not married then you see oh some dasha is giving marriage yes no and then you see oh am i destined to get married at all in my overall chart you know or not so we do the opposite okay so first chart then dashas then transits ignoring time place circumstances desh kal patra this is also very uh, prominent this is not very prominent but it can give uh, make things very problematic <clears throat> and this is more problematic especially if you are consulting somebody who you have never met before and you have also not talked to them you have not seen their face you have not felt their energy you know like for example if somebody is in new york and uh, he's asking me new york not just new york you know he's doing very well he's earning like uh 2 250 or k or you know half a million dollars <clears throat> and then he has like you know two three businesses okay <clears throat> so you don't know this and then he asks you when there is a good time for my profession so now the 10th house is activated you tell him oh yeah yeah maybe you can get another job you know when he hears your prediction he will laugh at you because he'll say hey, what nonsense is this okay so you you need to know some uh, background of the person you know what kind of a society he or she has been born and brought up in you know what kind of society they are now what technology they are involved you know for for example Uh, if a person nowadays at least is into you know like finance industry or it they will relatively earn more or even medical and law uh, they will earn more than somebody who is into you know like some yeah some other normal industry okay uh, that's you could say it is bad or good that that is up to you but you have to know what the person is doing only then you can predict okay otherwise uh, it will be like a circus you don't look at the d12 because the d12 tells you your family history so toxic family traits 
if indicated in D12, it is guaranteed that it is coming to you. Why? Because it is your chart ultimately. D12 is your chart. You can say it is the chart of my family, but it is your chart. It is indicating some uh, family issues. Okay. Most of the times the negative issues are coming in the genes. Okay. This is what I always see in the D12. So uh, if you see there is like a history of, you know, bad marriage, divorces and all this nonsense in some... <clears throat> You know, like extramarital affair, the father, mother, one of them is beating the other, you know, like abuse and all this and all this crap. If you see in the D12, then it does not mean that the father, mother were just like that. It also means that that trait has come to this person. So then the probability of divorce or extramarital affair or physical or mental psychological abuse in the marriage increases by 10 times. Okay. So please use this and then analyze the chart that will give you wonderful clues. Okay. All right. This is the last lack of personal sadhana and spiritual practices. So astrology is not exactly a spiritual science, but it is, it can become spiritual if you uh, see it from a spiritual perspective. Okay. Although it is a bridge between the material and the spiritual realm. So basically astrology should not be used to uh, kill your karma bad karma and you know just uh, get good things in life that doesn't work astrology should be used to know what are your limitations and what is the extent of success failure and all this in your material life and then you uh, dedicate your life to spiritual practices uh, but the problem is uh, most of the people who are into astrology they just see it as some you know mundane science you know just predict you know just get rid of it you know and it will work no it doesn't work like that you need to do your mantras you need to do seva you need to uh, read the scriptures you need to do dhyan japa samadhi and all this you know otherwise you are not in tune with the high, higher power high, how can you predict if you even you give some uh, fancy you know predictions which are 99 percent accurate but you cannot suggest things which are for the good of the client overall at a spiritual level you know then after two three years the client will again be running from one astrologer to, or to the other okay that doesn't work so if you are uh, giving consultations then it is very important that you follow some brahminical standards okay uh, otherwise uh, you can also not do it uh, but if you don't do it then uh, you will also not be able to help the person in totality okay so that is all from my side ladies and gentlemen please let me know in the comments what are some other reasons why astrologers predictions could fail and if you're new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation my website is down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him thank you